Hello, this is Virtual Isles of Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. Recently, I played against my American opponent, where they played a very interesting opening. 1B4, the Polish opening, otherwise known as the Orangutan opening. Now, I had a look uh, in this book, uh, the Unorthodox Chess Openings by Eric Schiller, and he has a section on the Polish opening, and he quotes Tautakawa, who played this somewhat uh, in his days. So Tautakawa said, This move, which has so bizarre an aspect, occupies a place of honour amongst the freak openings. And in terms of why it's the orangutan opening, uh, in the 1924 New York uh, tournament, uh, he and the other grandmasters visited the New York Zoo, visiting the young orangutan at the time. And he also thought that there was something about the climbing movement of the pawn to b4 and then b5 that is reminiscent of that inventive animal. The name has stuck. So, uh, named by Tadakawa, very interesting opening. Let's go take a look. So, I had the black pieces, and white plays 1b4. Polish opening, or the orangutan opening, and against 1b4, black has a number of options. So, firstly, take the center with the pawn. So, d5, or e5, they're both good. Or you could try to control the center with knight f6. Any of those are good. I decide to play e5 in this game. And white now immediately fianchettos the bishop, so bishop b2. Now here, I didn't necessarily want to lose that pawn. You know, obviously, you know, I, I have an attack on that pawn. And so without thinking too hard, I played knight to c6, making a mistake on move 2. And according to Stockfish, this is now plus 1.5. And the problem, of course, is, just like Tadakawa said, from b4 to b5. And now there's an attack on that knight. So that's a bit of a problem. Again, without thinking too hard, I just played knight to d4. And now I face e3. The knight attacked. Again. Now, in this position, I kind of realized that I'd stuffed up the opening uh, because the obvious move now is knight to e6 to take it out of the attack. You go anywhere else, you know, it's going to get attacked again, for example, knight there. Um, but, you know, if I play knight to e6, I just straight up lose a pawn. So moving the knight three times in the opening and losing a point of material, that doesn't feel very winning. So I thought here for a little bit over two minutes, and I decided to do something I suspected was going to be unexpected by white. And that is to play bishop to c5, and I'm going to gambit my knight. That's what I did. Now, Stockfish calls this a mistake. And I think no, I knew that the engine wasn't going to like that. <laughs> the engine actually rates it as plus six, completely losing. But after takes, takes, back with the pawn, not with the bishop, this bishop is now kind of stuck in this position. I've blocked it off. This knight can't really develop to that square either. And more than that, clearly, you know, for that pawn to be doing something, you know, white is trying to take queenside control. And that, you know, basically with that pawn there, it blocks it a little bit. And so also with the bishop there, it blocks it. Here, white now develops their other knight. That makes sense. And now queen to f6, you know, double defending that pawn. I'm going to build up behind that pawn. Now, keep an eye out on that bishop. Stockfish doesn't like it, but that bishop is in its natural development square also potentially facing off f2, you know, that's always potentially helpful in the future. Let's see what happens. Queen to e2 with check, block, develop with the knight, and now ready potentially to castle. Uh, now they, you know, possibly a little bit intemperate, you know, because, you know, that's not achieving anything. That's the only other developed piece. Pushing force, their only other developed piece, probably the most developed piece this far early, 
they don't really have an attack here. That was probably a mistake. And it was a mistake. White is still winning in this, uh, in this position. It's plus 2.8. But now I've got d6 chasing that knight. Again, winning me a little bit of tempo. Knight now jumps to g4. Now here the best move is for me to have this double attack on the knight. However, I decided to just whack that knight. I thought that was their most active piece. Let's just get rid of it. Chomp, capture back with queen. And a queen, of course, out in the middle of the board with no other pieces developed, places it at risk of being chased. Chased with development. And that's what I was aiming for. So h5, attacking the queen with some, you know, taking of the space on the king side. Queen has to move. And now I decide to long castle. So notice I've got a lot more development now than white. That is ostensibly developed, but it's chomping on a pawn, not doing anything useful. They develop their other bishop, that's fine. But now, rook d e8. You know, again, making things, you know, looking a little bit scary for white. So white now decides to short castle, and you can see Stockfish thinks that trying to aim for a queen trade is actually best for white. And now I move my knight out of the way, so knight with development, but with a discovered attack on the queen, queen forced to move again. I decide to move my queen out of the way, you can see Stockfish thinks that blocking uh, that trade with the knight was best, but I moved move there. They thought that they could, you know, uh, they could sort of bluff me there, but you can see that was a mistake because it weakens the defense of that f2 pawn in the future. Now we're at plus 1.8. I'm, I'm clawing back my disadvantage. Knight jumps forward again with another attack on the queen. Queen force move once again. And here I found a rather uh, very interesting move. So I wasn't sure which of these two moves was best and eventually I decided to move my F pawn uh, after thinking through a couple of minutes. Stockfish thinks the other one is better but again queen forced to move again and all the while white is losing tempo. So even though white is uh, definitely still doing pretty much okay uh, in this position, I've mostly now back to equality because of that gain in tempo and that gain in development. I now found a rather evil move. D3. Stockfish calls this a mistake. I don't think that was a mistake. I think this was a sneaky, tricky move because that doesn't seem to make sense because after, because I can take this way with check with a discovered attack on the rook. So they can't take that way. And I was pretty sure my opponent who's rated, uh, was rated in the 1400s would see that. And so the logical thing is to take with the pawn, right? And that's what they did. Take, but now I've got knight captures pawn on d3. A fork of the queen and rook. And again, it looks like the bishop can't take because it seems like it's pinned to the rook. And so here, uh, white decides, look, I better move the queen. They move the queen to g3, and that is a blunder. And it's a really bad blunder. Minus 7.7. .7. And you can see, Stockfish says bishop should take. Why is that the case? Because look, they're going to lose the knight anyway, potentially. Uh, Newsly, sorry, the rook anyway. And so what they could do here is take, I take with check, and the bishop blocks the check. That's what they should have done. And here it's basically still equal. But instead, they opted to move the queen. And now I'm not even going to take the rook. Because this wasn't a fork, a double fork. It was a triple fork of the F2 pawn as well. And now I've got bishop captures a pawn in F2. Triple fork, family fork, king, queen and rook. Have you ever before seen a family fork 
with a bishop. Here, white has no choice but to capture with the queen and lose a queen. And in this position, I've taken it back. I've made it work. You remember that gambit of that, of that knight with the bishop to c5? I've made it pay dividends. Really, really wonderful. And after that, I immediately, I was so excited, I immediately blunder by pushing the g5, thinking I'm going to make an attack on the king, and I straight up blunder my rook in the corner. Takes, takes. Here I thought, look, I think I'm still winning. I think I'm still okay, and at least I've gotten rid of that Fianchetto bishop. So that definitely wasn't the best move, but, I'm, uh, but they've lost the Fianchetto bishop. Queen, rook, king stuck here. I thought I should be fine. I should be fine. So they develop. I push the queen. They, they now decide to push a pawn uh, to defend here. That was a mistake because this weakens the light squares around the king. We will see that that becomes important. I now push forward and that was a serious blunder. It's a blunder because they now have bishop to g4 with check, discovered attack on the queen. So that was a serious blunder. Lucky for me, they didn't see it. They decided to take that pawn instead. Uh, I after this point, I did see, and I sort of thanked my lucky stars that I was still okay. Queen to c5 with check. Queen, uh, king now forced to move. I now take the bishop. That's fine. Move the rook back. And here I was pretty sure I was winning. But the issue is, how do I win? How do I get there? They push that pawn. I thought that was probably fine. I bring the rook behind the pawn on the f file, pushing forward, very powerful. Here, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're thinking they can move their knight some way with a discovered attack on the queen. That's fine. Check. King moves. But look, the king is trapped. King can't go here. King can't go here. And so what I can do? Queen to this position. You know, basically starting to look and infiltrate. Here, there's an obvious potential, another triple four. So white wastes the move with the rook. And here we've actually got a mate in at least 12. I think it might even be a little bit shorter than that, but white has now succumbed to a mating net. I now push the pawn forward with an attack. They block with the rook. However, now the, uh, the third rank is open. So queen forward with check. King cannot stay here, can't go to any of these squares forced to go back to g2, and now queen to f3, checkmate. Here we go, and the weakness in the light squares was white's undoing. Good game, gg. My big takeaway from this game is to not be afraid to gambit material for development and activity, especially if you're already losing. This creates winning chances that may pay off in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.